please hold. Your call will be answered by the next available operator. Rogers Communications. It is the largest voice and data provider in the country. It owns Rogers Cable, Fido, Chatter Wireless, City Phone, 70 magazines, 51 radio stations, and a slew of TV channels. Rogers is big and rich. With revenues of $10 billion over the last five years and assets of over $18 billion, its boss, Nadir Mohammed, one of Canada's highest paid CEOs, pulls in $13.6 million a year. But not everyone who works for Rogers gets that kind of deal. The attrition here is over 50%. I'm not young anymore. I love my job. I've always done this. I'm wishing to retire from it, but it's kind of the point that getting uh, Getting something like $12,000 to $15,000 a year at 50 hours a week is just brutal. It's not right. This is Canada, for goodness sake. That's why I left my country. In a bid to cut costs, Rogers subcontracted many jobs to outside companies. Has nothing to do with us, Rogers says. But the technicians who install Rogers' phone and internet feel very differently. I believe that Rogers has a moral responsibility in all of this as well. Um, these guys drive trucks that have the Rogers logo on it. They represent Rogers regardless of who they're employed for. They represent both companies. And I think Rogers has a responsibility to make sure that the people that they hire, so Intec for example, are paying fair wages and making sure that the working conditions for the people re representing them are fair. There is a huge sense of unfairness. The, the, the company charges you, charges the customer every month a monthly fee. They get a guaranteed you know, money off of you every month, whether you turn on your TV or not. The technicians are asking for the very similar system where when they come to work they know that their base minimum pay rate will be this much. It's, it's a simple concept. Salaried technicians at Rogers get a consistent paycheck, but Joe and 300 fellow technicians have no such guarantee since they're restricted to piecework. I've been here for 27 years in this business. I went from six, 65,000 down to less than 12,000 at 50 hours a week. That's not even legal, but that's what's happening. They found piecework set up that's highly abusive, arbitrary in their favor and all the extreme. And the politicians, I guess, stop, stop listening to the people in this country, in general, unless you're very, very rich. Year after year, the technicians saw their paychecks slashed. So, they decided to organize and go after a collective agreement. Even if their company was against them, they weren't going to back down. The salary go down every year. If you want to keep your salary, like last year, you need to uh, work more hours. Like, I know some technicians, they're working more than 80 hours per week. Maybe you cannot believe. I know of guys that are on the line right now that are in, in dire financial hardships because of their choices to be on strike. They believe in democracy, they believe in a vote, and they're adhering to that vote. That's ultimately what, why they're here. You know, they, they believe in what the union's trying to achieve through our first contract, and, you know, they're going to stick through it till the end. Rogers has become so big and so powerful that it no longer sees the need to uphold democratic rights. But for the 300 technicians on the line, this is totally unacceptable. This is Canada, democracy practice it and we deserve a fair life here if you work hard in this country you should be able to have a fair life it's unfortunate that, that we're dealing with a company that doesn't want to listen and come to a first agreement